Two, one, and we're live. Hey there, Matt, how are you? I'm doing good, Mike. We're going to jump in, and we are going to talk about, in our first episode here, something that's current, it's current events, and that is the magnetic poles of the Earth. And the reason people are talking about it right now is the impending pole reversal. You know, the, the news always wants to pick up on all the hysteria, and they drug out. Do you remember that... Um, that professor, I don't know which, I think he's from a Los Angeles University or something, but he's uh, he's like an Asian guy with long hair. I don't, Miko Chai yes, Miko. yes. He's from, well, I, he's from a school in New York, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay, but I was City wrong College coast. of New York, PhD or something like that. Okay, yeah, I was on the wrong coast there. Uh, he was on talking about it, and, and I just thought, you know, this is a, this is a pertinent topic. So that, that's the, the website of Dr. Michio Kaku. Um, he, he is a legit scientist. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the James Webb Space Telescope uh, mm -hmm. right there. Uh, just, if you want to, if people are curious. So, um, yeah, so it's it's just in the news right now, this whole thing. And uh, I'm, I want to start with asking Matt a question. And uh, I've already uh, told him what the question was going to be, so he's prepared, I hope. And I'm going to ask him, Matt, which way is north? And my answer to that is, which north are we talking about? So... The concept of, so for people to understand, there are actually two poles. There's the geographical or geological pole, right, north-south, yes. which is a pretty absolute thing. It's basically the axis of the Earth on the short... Uh, yeah, right so the, the, earth, the Earth is spinning like a top. Yeah. And so the bottom of the Earth would be the part that's on the surface of the table. It's it's the axis that's spinning on. And then you have the top that, uh, well, it's where Santa lives, right? It's the, it's the north yeah. pole. Yeah. Yep. Right. And then there's the geomagnetic or magnetic poles, which are generated by some sort of force or inside the Earth, um, which we'll talk about in a bit, that actually does not ever correspond. It, it's not in the same place as the geological poles. And in fact, they move. And uh, in sheer point of fact, if I remember correctly, our actual North Pole is magnetically, it really is a North Pole, right? As opposed to being a South Pole, you know? Well, no, no, no. Actually, actually, currently. OK, so here's here's what I understand. And now, actually, this will touch on another subject I want to bring up. When you hold a compass, it's a, the the needle is attracted to it's a positively charged side it is attracted to the negative. So it's actually the North Pole is actually the South magnetic oh, yeah, pole. You're right. You're right. I remember. Yeah. So it's that. actually uh, we just because because let's let's back up a little bit. Early sea navigation. Right, sailing the high seas, you would use a compass, but the compass you would use is not the compass that has anything to do with magnetic north. It was the kind you, uh, and it was the name of it. It's the kind that you uh, hold up to the stars, or you, mm -hmm. you, you, you basically say, okay, well, there's Polaris, and you put a, a spot in there, or you have, okay, here's where the sun is, and here's the season. It's and you like could, the compass you would use in ge geometry. It's called a sex. Angles. It's called a sext. Sex yeah, yeah, but that, but that is basically like a compass, and you can use that to navigate because of the geological north pole doesn't move. Mm -hmm. But then at some point, someone figured out that if you take a, a magnetic piece of iron and you suspend mm -hmm. it in water or oil or whatever it is, it'll turn. Please continue. So, which way is north? Yeah. Tell us uh, yeah. more so, about that. So, uh, for purposes of as we just went over. Um, we have our compass, our, mag our magnetic compass, which could tell us, which would identify north and south for us, the magnetic north and south. And the other interesting thing about it is these poles are moving. They're not like the magnetic poles have been drifting over the that we've been tracking them mm. from, for decades. Is it the North Pole currently in Greenland? Right, the northern tip of Greenland or something like that? Yeah, well, we, we could actually uh, look that up real quick here. So let's, yeah. let's take a pause here. Let's, yeah, let's take a look at that. All right, I pulled it up here. And uh, we'll go ahead and share this. This is uh, a well between 1590 and 2020. You see how that magnetic pole is moving mm -hmm. towards Canada and Greenland, that, that general direction. And then it just and shoots it off and, and heads the, like quickly. Look how fast yeah. that last little bit is. 
What was really interesting about that was that last little bit, and that's what's got everybody concerned about a pull flip too, you know? Is that it's it's well, happening. I, I was gonna say, like, um the the history of these magnetic reversals are documented scientifically. They have occurred, it's a real scientific phenomenon. There have been about somewhat less than two hundred of them documented in the last what, a couple hundred million years, off the top of my head. I don't remember offhand. Of reversals? So, Reversals, yeah. Right. So you have a you you gave me this earlier. I'll pull this. One hundred seventy one out of the documented reversals in the last three hundred million years, something like that. I... We'll just pull that right up. Yeah. So we have the list of them from, from which is on Wikipedia of all places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now what seems to happen is the the magnetic reversals occur several times happen where they almost occur. I believe those are called excursions. Okay. So it looks like, like where the pole looks like it's about to flip, then all of a sudden it doesn't. It goes back to being stable. It goes back to right? being stable. All right. Now, the, there are a couple of different uh, hypotheses on what caused. They don't 100% know because there's still mysteries, but they, they put different models together to explain it. And the best one, some of the best guesstimates or hypotheses are there's something going on in the outer core, not the inner core of the Earth, it's solid. But in the uh -huh. outer core of the Earth, involving something moving around it that is generating this magnetic field, and every so often it starts spinning in a different direction, and that's what causes it, right? Sure. Uh, I've heard there have been, had, I've heard there's a correlation between the the Earth's crust subduction during because of plate tectonics and movement when it dives, you know, it's diving under another plate, and then they were able they kind of like reverse it or reversed. Their, the data, whatever, and they were able to see that almost like 110 million years exactly after something happens, the the pole will do something, like the, the pole reverses. Also related to that, on the topic I'm interested in, which are mass extinctions, so during the five great mass extinctions that we've proven, like the dinosaurs, for example, mm. uh, in that one, there was a change in sea level that was pretty dramatic because of the way it hit. And there appears to have been a, a magnetic force generated due to that change in sea level. And what just as relates to the uh, plate tectonics thing, the Earth's mantle is liquid, as is yes. the outer core. So uh, what we're alluding to is that there appears to be a, a connection between a change in pressure in that liquid, sudden pressure, possibly causing this flip. And if this, if there is a giant, basically, lodestone, to keep it simple, I'm, you know, I'm just throwing it out there, floating around in, in the Earth's outer core, a, a wave going through that liquid could cause, because it's, it's not going to be a perfect sphere that whatever's floating there. It could be something that has like a, kind of like a wing or sail or whatever. That pressure wave flows through there, it just literally flips it over. It's all of a sudden spinning the other way. And then that magnetic force uh, resonates outward and, and you see the magnetic fields, which are currently spinning one way, all of a sudden get dragged back, 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 and then spin the other way over the course of however many years. You know, that that's a verbal way of putting how the model would work. I'll bring this video up. Uh, you have some things to say about it. All right. So, yeah. So this is really interesting because what this what this is talking about is one of the reasons why the the poles might be flipping, or why why it has that instability that causes this is the collision with the Earth that originally formed the Moon left behind chunks of itself buried inside the Earth's mantle. What do you have to say about this? So first on the video itself, it is very well produced. Okay, fact phenomenal does put together very well looking. Yeah, yeah. Right? This is a uh, fact. No yeah, fact phenomenal. Yep. And there are there are there is real information in this video. Okay, but he the the person doing the video or authoring or whatever, he cherry picks information, particularly later on when he talks about the consequences of the poles flipping. Okay. okay. Um. Basically, he, for those who remember the movie 2012, which had uh, a different type of pole flip occurring, um, he, he basically said the magnetic pole flip is going to cause I think, a mass amount of worldwide disasters that's not going to cause. So that that's the part of it I want to debunk and say, like, if you, when you watch this video, which you should. Um, well, let's take, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at yeah. it here. We'll just, uh, we'll look at a little bit of it here. Yeah. So it, it shows... The event in which this, you know, was like a fea, it, it collides with Earth. Part of it broke off and it hit, it created the moon. But there were pe two pieces that they claim that 
embedded within the earth that that are that are there and it's causing the uh well it's causing instability so normally without it the the north and south magnetic poles would be a lot more stable is is the hypothesis in which this is based so what, what do you think so uh having read a little bit on that on the especially on the moon the, the fia theory i guess you would call it so having having uh there is an element of truth to the i mean obviously the the best the most conclusive way the moon likely formed was through the impact so yeah yeah there. i think i think um, that's been established when you you look at the moon rocks and you can say oh no they're they're from earth yeah, yeah. well yeah the surface uh, uh, matter of fact uh if you watch if you at home watch the video on there um it shows that as these bodies impacted the surface of both planets the earth and thea intermingle to, and then separate yeah, and let me let me see if I can share that video real quick. We'll throw that up there yeah. too. There's a video on that webpage from NASA. Yeah, I got. I think I got it. That one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is the model. You see how they um the Earth's mantle reformed from the joint material and then the moon yeah. spin together from yeah. the entire almost entirely from the surface materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very fascinating study. So. And and the, the chunk so of that Thea part that goes back and hits. Yeah. Oh, they skipped a bunch. Now they skipped a whole bunch and then said, "Okay, that was the collision." So it's just different, different views of the same thing. Yeah. It's a super. It's a super supercomputer simulating this. Yeah, supercomputer. Yeah, of course. Models. So, so, and the video we just talked about with the from uh, Nomial. Mm. It goes to with the idea, starts with the idea that two chunks of Thea are floating around inside the Earth's mantle, m destabilizing the magnetic field coming from the deep mantle or outer core, depending on mm. where exactly you, people think it is. And that that concept I could see because there's, there's things, I mean, that specific mechanism, I don't know, but the concept that there's something destabilizing the magnetic sphere more so than normal. Um, given how it moves erratically, that I could see as being possibly very valid. Uh, now, the idea that uh, the fact no video later runs with what, that all the horrific things that could happen due to the magnetic wall reversal, that's where the video goes off the rails. Mm. You know? Because, um, number one, these magnetic reversals aren't instantaneous. They take decades to hundreds of years, in some cases, technically far longer Two, most of them it's not like it goes to zero then stays zero uh for like an hour we all die from solar radiation then goes back it's really that as the thing slows down the the existing magnetic god uh, it's been too long since field, the, 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 yeah the field the momentum of the magnetic field there's a word for that um as the magnetosphere moving, right the magnetosphere it, it, it gradually loses energy so to speak as the spinning stops then once the spinning goes the other way, it acts it, it acts like reverse acceleration on the magnetic field. So the magnetic field drops to zero, then starts expanding the other way. We know not to worry about it because mm -hmm. we we've lived humans have been through it before. Yes. A couple of years right when it hits zero, we will have some issues to there'll probably be an increased risk of say skin cancer. Not dramatically, but noticeably. Or, or of an, an an interference from things like uh solar flares causing you know how we get that satellite interference and all that you know they will be a little right. weaker but not to the point where we'll be insta fried when it hits zero yeah so the idea of like should we worry uh well it depends on what we're talking about we're not talking about a, a you know extinction level event or anything it's not it's not going to affect well <laughs> now here's my paranoia mike <laughs> oh, okay let's hear <laughs> we were this talking about this uh, uh we, we did talk about this on the video just before people lacking survival skills oh yeah okay um yeah so yeah. If if let's say this thing gets to the point, let's let's say it's the year twenty thirty, right? Okay. And it's gonna hit zero in May of twenty thirty, just to, just to aim for a day, right? Sure. And we know this is coming along, and we prepare. Now, how many millions and millions of people are not gonna bother making sure that their the circuitry in their heating system and air conditioning system mm -hmm. isn't gonna be fried by the low level burst? You know, yeah. They're not gonna put that little insulation on it. Well, but, let, that's, let... but May you could survive, right? But well, sure. what if it's December in in Idaho and it's ten below, and all of a sudden your your HVAC system's uh, 
hits zero, your little computer in your HVAC well, fries, and you don't wake up because the heat goes to zero and you die overnight. Let's ramp that catastrophe up a little bit by introducing two things happening at the same time. So I want to throw in here. Well, first of all, before we get too far off track, there is something I want to mention, and that is the animals that exist on this planet have the ability, I suppose, to see which you know directions. Like birds can know which direction they're going. Uh, obviously, they migrate and whatnot. And I was actually reading earlier that there's a certain thing in their eyes, for example, it's called crypto cryptomeres, something mm -hmm. like that, Tri cryptomere, whatever it is. It's a protein oh, yeah. in their retina. And it actually, uh, they say that it creates a different hue or a different, I don't know, the way they look through it's a different color, perhaps, of the sky, depending on which direction they are looking at. So they can actually see the magnetic field. So when they're going like true north or true south, their vision looks different than it does if they go east or west or any degree. So that's how they're able to navigate long distances. They're not picking out like, oh, there's a road sign down there. They actually are looking at the magnetic field. When that all changes, they're gonna be all screwed. Birds are gonna fly the wrong direction uh, during you know, the winters and summers. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. But that's not what I wanna really talk about. I wanna talk about the thing where you have the Earth's magnetic sphere that protects us from the solar radiation. And just recently, we had a warning that came up. And let me see if I'll bring it up right here. Here over here on space weather, like, so this is uh, uh, the link that you want me to look at here. Yeah, that's the main side. I think it's, they talk about. Uh, yeah, so you can see it, like, right? You can yeah. see the explosion uh, right there on the, what is it, like four o'clock position? Yep. And it just goes whoosh and it's going out and it's not coming, it's not looping back, right? And maybe on Friday, February 24th, a chain reaction of events on the sun sparked. Uh, and this is 26 today, I'm looking at it. Two radio blackouts and the Earth directed CME on. Saturday, February 25th, it happened again. A magnetic filament connected to the sunspot erupted producing M6 class solar flare. Man, the, the sun is so active right now. I really need to get a solar filter for my telescope. I really need to, I mean, it's just, I have to. The flank of this CME should strike Earth's magnetic field on February 28th, that's two days from now, possibly sparking geomagnetic storms and as strong as a category G3. During such storms, auroras have been sighted in the USA as far south as Illinois and Oregon. So, when you realize that this amount of radiation and energy is, is being absorbed, deflected, filtered by the Earth's magnetic field, mm -hmm. if something like this were to come our way, and it doesn't happen all the time, I mean, this is a, a rare thing, it makes the news. When it happens when we have, we're in the middle of a pole flip where our magnetic field is weakened or maybe at zero, you know. Then we get in trouble. We get in a lot of trouble. And now, that piggybacks on what you were saying earlier. Yeah. Just just not to be alarmist though. There are, no, I mean, no. So yeah, there would be vulnerability to our particular electronic systems, which we are becoming more and more vulnerable to for two reasons. One, we have more and more electronic integration into our uh, lives, right? Mm -hmm. And two, people are b becoming more and more dependent upon that electronic integration. So the ma Earth's magnetic field doesn't just protect, it, it actually protects our economy. It's not, we, we've lived through all this stuff in the past. Like all, all of these things, yeah. humans have survived it in the past. Yep. But I mean, we are so dependent, go ahead. The, since the last magnetic reversal, which is like 700,000 years ago, approximately, right? Yeah. Uh, humanity survived multiple super volcano disruptions since then. Right. Uh, we've we have survived an asteroid impact that actually almost killed us, or comet with the Younger Dryas event 12,000 years ago. So we're a very robust species, and and now we have well, jur much jury's, more jury's still out on that. I mean, I'm 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 not um, denying that. I just you know obviously show show me the more evidence, you know. Uh, well, no, I'm just saying something happened to cause a worldwide event. That that we don't know what the cause was, but what else? Sure. Like volcanoes and no, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not there. arguing against the point. I'm just saying I'm not going to jump on the it's fact team until it's settled. Oh no, hey, okay, let yeah. me let me clarify. I'm yeah. not saying that the source. I'm I'm not talking about the source of the event. We know the event occurred in terms of worldwide extinction. Mm. That's been proven, right? It, it's the cause of it that is 
we agree needs to be verified. Oh yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll talk about some of that stuff when we, when yeah. we continue and, on with and different shows. Yeah. Humanity has taken a lot of big hits. Yeah, yeah. Since including the magnetic reversal and since the last magnetic reversal. Yeah. So but, we're a very robust but species. Where we where we have an issue or where we are going to possibly run into some trouble is when you realize how dependent we are on our toys. How to get food from the farm to us. Um, if you had, for example, power stations go out, all the satellites stop working, it's going to be a really big disrupt. You thought COVID was a disruption to the food supply? Oh, this would be huge, right? So there's going to be rioting, there's going to be problems, there's going to be... Humanity will survive, but we don't want to live through this. This is we survive, but it's... It's going to suck until we get our crap back together. So how do you prevent that? And it's sh well, you know, proper shielding on all the electronics, well, the, the redundancies. Problem, well, the compensating for human stupidity is the first and foremost right. thing we have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all these, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call them? The preppers that live out in the, the yeah. desert and they have, I mean, they're they're the ones that are going to survive, right? <laughs> well, you don't need to be an extreme prepper. To no, no, no. But I'm saying like, they're going to be like, yeah, told you so. You know, you know, we're, we're if, ready. If, 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 for example, you have an ex a medical condition where you have to be on a ventilator or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. In trouble. But oh, yeah. If you're a normal person, and you know, like me, I take or just or just basis. or just you need refrigeration for your medication. Yeah. Right. Or and, you, and, you need and, to be able to go down to the pharmacy. Uh, you know, yeah. go down to the pharmacy and get your get your medications. And like, no, yeah. sorry, like the like we, there's no supply. Like we can't. Like they can't yeah. even make well, it right what now. What they did with um with uh, Y2K, where yeah. uh, they they made it so you can get like three month prescriptions instead of one month prescription or something like that. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to make sure any vital medication you've got a long supply, a couple months. I was yeah. at a six month supply, and not to be honest, with something like mm -hmm. magnetic reversal. Yeah. And you have to kind of assume that in general we're aware of it like like it isn't like um in, in the disaster movies where they look up and and it's 16 mile wide meteor just teleports to the sky you know oh sure like, right right yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, if, like if, like if all of a sudden like right now the thing reverses like I mean, and no one noticed all of a sudden it goes from where it is to you know extremely opposite mm -hmm. that'd be a problem but that's not how this is going to occur this is, this is going to be a decline over time which seems to be occurring. And then if it's going to go full magnetic reversal and not just, and it's not just an excursion, it'll go to zero and then it'll start increasing the other way and it's over a period of, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But we, what right? we know though, is that the doom and gloom of what they call, and I want to bring this up, is the, the cataclysmic pull shift hypothesis, also known as the Adam and Eve Armageddon. Because there's people out there saying things that are complete nonsense, but they're saying things. And the things that they're saying is that when you get the pole reversal, you'll get oceans rushing inland at breaknecks. Like it was almost like the earth just stops rotating nonsense. Okay, so- And, uh, and they're just, there's, there's all kinds of this stuff happening where people are talking about like, just this is what happened a long time ago. The poles shifted and it, it just destroyed the earth and people had to reset many times because of this stuff. This, this so is me, this is not a legit. Thing. Let me address that. That the, the second one, number one, it can't happen. But uh, even if it could, that crust shifting pole, where the geological pole shifts, that's what generates all of the stuff about um, tidal waves and things like that, because that would in fact cause tidal waves. But yeah. here's the thing: the Earth is rotating 800 miles per hour just on one axis alone. So if the crust were to shift, imagine if you were you were standing on a car, not in the like no seatbelt on, and that car would, and the car is traveling 800 miles per hour in one lane, and the car would still travel 800 miles per hour, shift to another lane. You would not shift with that car. In fact, you would be, for example, as these people contend that that level of of, of shift occurred, we would not be here to talk about it because nothing would, the, the surface of the earth would have been scoured clean. It would just yeah, be I think a, it's, a, a I, muddy swamp. You said 800. I was thinking it was more like 1,000. I heard it was, I, I remember 823 miles an hour for some reason. There's no evidence that anything like a, a, an 800 mile per hour tidal wave has ever gone across the surface of the earth, okay? Yet these pole reversals have happened at least 171 times. So that alone could discount the- Yeah, the no, whole... I think I think what, they're, what the idea is that with a pole reversal could come um, like a mantle revert, like a shift, like you're saying, like where the Earth's crust. And it can't. It, it can't. It, it, it's not enough. But as, as powerful as you people think magnetics are, 
right? A magnetic sword. I mean, the, and relative to what generates that tiny little lodestone compared to the mass of the Earth, the gravity of the Earth is generated by a much bigger mass. Therefore, the effect of gravity on on the Earth is much bigger. And gravity is what basically holds holds you on the surface of the Earth. It's what holds the surface together as one piece that's rotating at 800 miles per hour. Um, there's not enough uh, magnetic energy, to use a really bad phrase, to cause for the magnet the, the Earth's magnetic sphere uh, field to co- move the surface, the crust of the Earth. There just isn't enough energy there. Okay. Yeah. So that's not something we need to worry about. And uh, all the movies, you know, the Michael Bay, Jerry Bruckheimer movies that come out, that they, you know, what, what's that the, one? Um, the movie 2012 was about an actual uh, geological pole shift. Yeah. So, you know, that that caused all that nonsense. Right. Now, that movie does have some great special effects. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, like the uh, the one the Super Bowl, yellow on Super Bowl camera. But that's also I the kind of movie that triggers people to freak out, and then the next thing you know, you have people come in. You have you have your your scientist guy from earlier. He comes on and it tries to calm people down. Like no, 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 it's just a movie. That would never happen. Uh, and it's true, right? It would never happen. So, uh, although in the movie, the scientist guy always says that no, it's never going to happen. Then it does happen. <laughs> it does happen, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah, it's called Earth Crustal Displacement Hypothesis, and. Uh, it's, it's it's nonsense. So we need to we need to establish that 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 is not something that anyone needs to worry about. Humankind, not even like Homo erectus or whatever. I mean, humans, Homo sapiens sapiens. We've been through all of this. It's, it's happened in the past. Our, our mm-hmm. species has been on, around on the Earth for a very long time. Then of course, the animals. Just the you know the the asteroid knocked out the dinosaurs. It wasn't anything like this. Uh, to circle back to the point we talked about earlier, remember yeah. the theme hypothesis of the formation of the moon. There is some estimation that when that event occurred, life had already existed, got wiped out by the Thea impact, and mm. restarted again. So life, mathematically at least, is very robust, right? So, <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to say we did that, well, I'll just draw a moon at us and we'll be fine. No one's saying that. Mm. But, yeah. you know, we well, are my robust. My point is, when you, when you yeah. talk about the, you know, the age of the Earth, there's plenty of time for life to completely restart multiple times. Yeah. We've, we've had extinction level events. We've seen um, all these different art organisms that used to exist, uh, fossilized and dated and whatever. And they say, you know, billions of years ago, they were they were around and died. So, But none of it had anything to do with anything like this. So but basically, we could, we could move on from this subject of, is the Earth, are we all going to be wiped out? because and they have no chance we, we're just done for and the answer is no it's really our life is, would just get very very difficult if um we got the pole reversal or if we had a incoming uh, cme at the same time as a as a pole reversal we didn't have any protection cancers obviously would go way up and our all of our electronics would be toast unless we start protecting them i think we'll all go back to vacuum tubes and and uh you know all my old 80s computers would probably still work, <laughs> but none of the new yeah. stuff. Uh, GPS, you know, all that stuff would be GPS in your car would no longer know which way it's going. Although, interestingly enough, the actual military GPS satellites were the first ones. They might actually survive it because they're hardened. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's only the consumer ones, consumer GPS satellites that would get taken out. And, and the other thing is, is how fast could we recover and then start sending... Uh, things back up to replace the things that we lost. You know, how, how fast, you know, e- Elon blasts off and puts those stupid Starlink satellites, it seems like every other Wednesday. We, how long well, would it take? one of the reasons he wants the Starlink. Yeah. Like, it, it's designed to be robust against that type of event. I hope so, yeah. And then, of course, that, that's one of the reasons why he wants uh, to go to Mars. He wants to uh, start another civilization there as well, so that uh, yeah. if something happens to the Earth. Um... Okay, so I want to bring this up real quick. Um, this is a re- like a, another one of these recent stories, and this was started this whole thing for me. Uh, just talk about this today, and it is the Earth's inner core has stopped spinning, or may have stopped spinning, according to some Chinese scientists that are using the data from earthquakes, where you know it sends the waves through the Earth, and they're able to then look back in time and say, okay. And this is like, this is something that you computer model and, and such, so they can yeah. see how the Earth's core is spinning, and they say this, and it's earthquake data hints that the inner core stopped rotating faster than the rest of the planet in 2009, but not all researchers agree. Okay, thousands of kilometers beneath your feet, 
Earth's interior might be doing something very weird. Many scientists think that the inner core spins faster than the rest of the planet. But sometime in the past decade, according to study, it apparently stopped doing so. We reported the findings today in Nature Geoscience. I think we're on the verge of figuring this out. Richards discovered the inner core in 1936 after studying how seismic waves from earthquakes travel through the planet. Changes in the speed of the waves reveal that the planet's core, which is about 7,000 kilometers wide, consists of a solid center made mostly of iron, which is what you need for magnetic stuff, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that part of uh, the spinning? Uh, it's kind of like an electric motor, but uh, it's a, what did he call it? A electromagnet? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Isn't that what you kind of need? Is you need a, a solid iron core? It changes the density of the outer liquid driving churning motions that maintain Earth's magnetic field. And the, 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 another interesting point about that article is um, he, they do explain how they get the inner images of with the with the shock waves from earthquakes yeah. and using them to map it out. Yeah, pretty nifty. It is pretty nifty. Yeah, I guess probably one of the final topics we should cover in this regard is how do we know that the poles have ever flipped? Is it is an assumption? Is it a computer model, or is there data? So. Uh, so a volcano is kind of like a spigot in the earth down into the mantle, uh, and which is much more iron rich than the surface. And the deeper the, the, the tap, the more iron rich you get, because iron is a heavier element. It sells more and more towards the core of the earth, right? To a point where you get the solid core, there, which is mostly iron and some nickel. Um, when a volcano erupts, that material has m magnetically aligned chunks of iron, is the best way to put it. And... When that solidifies on the surface of the Earth, it solidifies with the magnetic field direction that it was when the, when it was liquid down in the in the mantle. So, if the Earth reverses, the only way for to the only logical way for this magnetic iron of uh, uh, lava iron to have a different magnetic field, where it would be if the the pole was reversed when it, when it erupted. Okay, so if I if I understand what you're saying here, so you have the, a volcano spews out the lava, we'll call it the lava. It's in call it liquid form. When it cools, the iron that's in it is magnetic and it has the ability to align itself in the direction of the magnetic pole. And so in in the like the we talked about the compass earlier and we know like if you put a piece of iron with a magnetic component to it, Put it in a float and you put it like a piece of cork or something you put it in water it'll point north and so these pieces of uh, these little iron filaments or whatever they point in the direction of magnetic uh, north at the time that they cooled mm -hmm. and so when you have volcanic eruptions over a period of time you start they're to like see snaps. yeah yeah they're like they're like, like snapshots. They're, they're snapshots or pictures of where the magnetic pole was because now i guess the uh, you know just to get this out of the way is it possible that the lava field earth's mantle or earth's crust is moving you know it's uh, so we have earthquakes could it be rotated in the wrong direction because that whole area is just not pointed in the same place it was originally or well, it, just to get that out of the way i mean i, I know the answer is no but i'm i'm asking like can we well it would have had to happen to every single volcanic eruption in every single volcano on the earth Exactly. So you have a volcano, let's say in North America, you have one in South America, you have one in Europe, you have one in... When the lava is in liquid form, the magnetic mineral, the magnetic aligned minerals, I would say, they're floating around and moving. So if they're, if they're going to point towards a pole, they'll align that way, right? Yeah. Because that's what happens with your compass, the, the thing... Right, right, right. Around. Exactly. Right? When that solidifies, the magnetic thing which should be pointing at a North Pole, a magnetic North Pole, is pointing, say, at a South Pole, the actual Earth today would have the South Pole and North Pole flip. That's only possible if when it was liquid, those poles of the Earth were reversed. Yes. And so you have uh, you have the record over a period of time, and you can actually take core samples from different locations, and you can literally see every, all of it correlate across the entire planet. And it says, okay, well, between this period and this period, the pole was over there. And between yep. this period and period, oh my gosh, it's the opposite now. It's the other yeah. way. And maybe there's a place, and I, you know, I'm not going down so far into the research here. This is just a fun conversation. 
maybe a point in which it was none of the above. It was off to the west somewhere, or it was off to the east. It it had moved in the midpoint somewhere, um, and maybe that's captured somewhere. I don't I don't know. Um, I'm not going to look for it. It could be out there, the data. And, and the proof that this occurs, you took a chunk of that lava, right? Mm -hmm. And you heat it above Marine Pier Curie, right? There's okay. something called the Curie point, where if you heat rock above a certain point, all the magnets in it would lose their alignment, their magnetism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then as it cools, the magnetic would realign with the current Earth's uh, magnetic field, so gotcha. that which would be probably different from what they were before. Right. And with that, I, I mean, I, I guess we could just kind of recap. Uh, the Earth, pole, the magnetic pole wanders. It's going in a direction right now at a speed that indicates it's not normal from the time that we started really paying attention to it. It could be the signs of we are getting ready for a flip. There's a lot of talk recently about the pole getting ready to flip, and we are overdue for such a thing when you consider the entire record of how often this has happened. And all I got to say is, as long as there's a magnetic field at all, like if, if it's even if it's spinning and we have a magnetic field, but it's just not pointing north south, if it's, it doesn't matter. If there's something, let me see if I could find a crazy picture. I want to share this. Okay. So, so we can see that. And yeah. this is how it, it is right now between, oh, that's between reversals. We have north and south. That's normal. That's what we got. And we have the north and it, these blue lines loop around and they connect with the yellow lines that loop around. And that's what creates our little you know, force field. And then we have what it looks like when it starts to go crazy during a reversal. You have south, 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 and north, and north, and north, and you have all this chaos, right? If this chaos continues to, if this is what we have, that's some shield for us. I mean, it is still there. The, the concern is that it goes to zero. There's nothing. And that, that's my fear. But as long as there's something, it could still be strong enough to protect us from the bad stuff. Well. Let me point out, when we say it goes to zero, we're saying that the for the forces involved balance at zero. It doesn't mean there's no magnetic field in parts that are uh, positive or negative, like the picture there. Mm, yeah, lots like, of lots of north and lots of south uh, yeah. as, it, as it's flipping. Yeah. And by the way, is there something else that you're aware of? And I and I know the answer to this, so I'm I'm just quizzing you, Matt. Is there something else that you are aware of that, let's say, uh, we know for a fact and we can measure, we can watch it happen, that uh, the poles flip on a regular basis? So it's, it's a celestial body that uh, we can watch the magnetic pole flip on a regular basis. Uh, pulsar? Nope. Um, the sun. The sun uh, every eleven years flips. Mm. Yeah. And we can watch it happen. And when you have, uh, you know, solar minimums and maximums, um, mm -hmm. that's that's typically between those points. That's the eleven-year solar cycle. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it is a natural occurring phenomenon. It you could, I mean, the sun flips all the time. It, the sun doesn't go crazy. I mean, it does go crazy. It gets, you know, prominences and all kinds of crazy things. And it's, but um, we all look forward to it. Any, any solar astronomer out there, they'd love that stuff because it, it's most active time. They get all kinds of good stuff out of it. But uh, okay, well, with that, I think we've pretty much covered this whole phenomenon here. And, and it does, it's going to relate uh, as background information going forward in other videos that we'll do. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you to anyone who has uh, stopped by and watched this. Please give it a like, a thumbs up, and a subscription. Uh, Matt's uh, YouTube channel will be down there in the description as well. He will be my co-host going forward, of course. This is our show. So please make sure you go over and check out his his YouTube channel as well. This will also be on uh, Rumble. If you want to follow me over there on Rumble as well, uh, please click the, click the link in the description. Go over there to Rumble. If you're watching this on Rumble, please do the reverse. Please come over here onto YouTube and click the subscription over here. It really does help me out. Thank you, everybody. Have a great uh, week. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.